Good evening, and thank you so much for joining us tonight for our midweek Bible study. I'm so glad that you've chosen tonight to uh, take this time and open God's Word uh, with me. As we continue our study through the book of Acts, we're looking at Paul's life and how Paul's life had been one that had been full of turmoil and trials and adversities, and yet we, we find Paul at the latter part of his life uh, he's been, uh, you know, put on trial. Uh, he's been tried to be murdered. Uh, and, and those are just a few of the things that have happened in just the last couple of weeks. But this morning, as uh, this evening, as we continue our study, we're going to be looking in Acts chapter 23, verses 11 through verse number 22. But let's have a word of prayer as we kick off this lesson together. Father, we say thank you for today. Thank you for the opportunity we have to come before you. Father, tonight we open your word because, Father, we want to learn. We need your help. We need your strength. We need your encouragement as we open this word. That, Father, your word may speak to us. And, Father, we may use it for your honor and for your glory. Oh, God, be with us and help us tonight to discern your word. It's in your name. Amen. So, here we are with Paul. Paul's been literally put back in jail because uh, the Jews tried to kill him last week. Uh, they literally, uh, the, the Sadducees and Pharisees got into this argument, and they were literally about to rip Paul apart when, when the uh, Roman centurions uh, stepped in and, and literally took uh, charge of Paul and put him back in the barracks for his own safekeeping. But that night, something happened. And that's what we're going to pick up with in verse 11. And of course, we're going to go verse by verse as we do each and every week. It says, but the following night, the Lord stood by him and said, be of good cheer, Paul, for as you have testified for me in Jerusalem, you must also bear witness at Rome. The following night, something interesting happened. The Lord stood near Paul. He stood near to him and notice the words that he gave to Paul. He says, be of good cheer. Now, that's an interesting terminology uh, to say, uh, be of good cheer. Hey, Paul, be happy you're in prison. Be happy, Paul, you're, you're going through this trial. Be happy, Paul, because uh, uh, I'm going to do something. I don't know about you, but I look at this passage and that particular thing, and, and I, I basically see Jesus is looking at Paul saying, hey, keep your head up. Keep your head up. Remember, this is about my glory. This is about me doing a great work here in the Jews as well as in the Gentiles. And so he says, listen, Paul, you have stood and you have testified of me in Jerusalem. Now, I see that that's a, an interesting place, that as Paul had testified of him in Jerusalem, he says, then so you must also do in Rome. See, it wasn't going to be easy. It wasn't going to be a smooth ride. But God wanted Paul to know uh, that, that, that simply he was about to go to the heart of the Roman Empire. And as he was going to do that, he needed to go on ahead, lift his eyes up, and be encouraged. You know, sometimes God takes us on a long and difficult road. He takes us where He wants us. He takes us to the valley to where we can learn, and we can learn a couple of things. The first thing that we need to learn is this, is we can trust Him. We can trust Him, but also not only can we trust Him, we must learn that we need to have a kingdom mindset, not just a, a short-term, but a long-term uh, impact in our minds because we need to make sure that we realize that, get this, it's not about everything that we want, but it's about making sure God's kingdom is magnified today today and tomorrow and forever. That's something that you and I bear the responsibility of doing. And, and so when we look at verse 11, we have to understand that God was basically telling Paul to lift his head up. Don't get discouraged. He's still on his throne. He still has a work to do. And that, that he, could, he could make some great decisions for the Lord. In verse 12, we read these words. And when it was day... Some of the Jews banded together and bound themselves to, uh, under oath, saying that they would neither drink nor eat till they had killed Paul. That's an interesting passage. 
Because all of a sudden, the same Jews that were there, the ones that said, hey, we find no fault in him, and the ones that said, hey, we find a lot of fault in him, now there's a group that has banded together. They have banded together and they've made a commitment, an oath, a vow, whatever you want to call it. They've made this before the Lord and before uh, others. And, and it says this, that they would not eat or drink until they had killed Paul. Now, we say, okay, well, it's a small minority. It's just a few people that, that, were, were, that made this oath. No, there was 40 people that made this oath. There were 40 people that committed themselves to saying, hey, listen, we're not going to eat, we're not going to drink, we're not going to, until Paul is dead. Now, verse 13 also uses an interesting word. It says, now there were more than 40 who had formed this conspiracy. The word conspiracy, uh, they conspired against. They basically wanted them to know that, that they had come and coveted themselves together. They came to an understanding and they were going to do whatever it took to get rid of Paul. Verse 14 says, They came to the chief priests and the elders and said, We have bound ourselves under a great oath that we will not eat nothing until we have killed Paul. Notice this. They come to the chief priest, they came to the elders, and they said, We've come wanting you to know that we've made this commitment to kill this person. Uh, and we're not going to eat until we've, we've done that. Uh, verse 15 gives us a little bit more interesting eyesight into what was going on here. Because notice what he says, Now you, therefore, together with the council, suggest to the commander that he be brought down to you tomorrow as though you were going to make further inquiries concerning him but we are, uh, we are ready to kill him before he comes near. Now, notice it says that now therefore, or because of all this, uh, priests and elders, we want you to know this. We're going to tell you what you're going to do. We're going to tell you how you're going to act. We're going to, and so all of a sudden, these 40 plus people were telling the elders and, and, and the chief priests, this is what you're going to do. This is how we're going to remove this problem. You know, sometimes uh, we conspire against God. God's moving in a direction. He's moving in our lives. He's moving in our church. And, and yet we, we don't like something that's happened. We don't like somebody or something. And what do we do? We go to one or two people and we try to get them on our sides and go to another two or three people and get them on our sides. And we begin to conspire against a person or against a situation or against a mission or a missionary. And, and all of a sudden we have this interesting viewpoint that we see that people people are, are saying this is how we're going to get rid of this problem. We're going to conspire against this issue and make sure that it's gotten rid of. Now, notice what he says. In verse 15, he says, Now therefore, together with the council, suggest to the commander that he be brought down to you. Why? Because of Paul's testimony, they needed to eradicate Paul. They needed to get rid of him. Why? Because he was causing a disruption in the Jewish uh, practices. He was causing a disruption in, in the community. So there was a lot of reasons to get rid of him. But, but this, is, this is what we have to understand, is that they said, we want you to suggest... We want you to suggest that he be brought down, that we can make further inquiries concerning him. Why did they want to make these inquiries? It wasn't about making any further inquiries. They already knew all the information. They had already gathered all the information that they needed. It was now just a simple plan that they wanted to get rid of Paul. And he says, listen, we'll be near and we'll be ready and near to kill him before he comes near. Verse 16 says this, So when Paul's sister's son, uh, basically uh, Paul's nephew, um, heard of their ambush, he went and entered the barracks and told Paul. So it wasn't like some secret they were trying to keep. It wasn't something that they were literally trying to necessarily hide because here Paul's sister's son or Paul's nephew hears what they're doing. They're about to do to Paul and he goes and he tells him, uh, hey, Paul, I want you to know something. Something's about to happen and you need to be aware. You need to understand what's happening. Verse 17 says, Then Paul uh, called one of the centurions to him and said, Take this young man to the commander, for he has something to tell him. And 
it's basically that's very self-explanatory. Um, Paul calls one of the guards. He says, "Listen, this young man needs to talk to. He needs to talk to uh, of the commander. He needs to tell him what's uh, what he's just told me." Verse eighteen says, "So he took him and brought him to the commander and said, Paul the prisoner called me and asked me to bring this young man to you. He has something to say to you." Now that's interesting. It's because now we see that, that, that the bar is being passed on. He has something that, that has to be inquired. The guard, the centurion, understood what was going on. This also shows us a couple of things about Paul's life. He had favor in the jail. He had favor among the people. He had favor even among the Gentiles that were there. These people knew Paul. Paul knew them. And yet, now whenever there was coming a point there was going to be a time where Paul could use that leverage that he had and say, I need to talk to this person. The centurion uh, uh, Paul had called to, uh, and, and this young man goes and he visits with the commander. Verse 19 kind of opens that up to us. And the commander took him by the hand, went inside aside, and asked privately, what is it that you need to tell me? Uh, it's interesting because the commander doesn't just say, hey, ha go over here, have a seat, uh, I'll get to you when I get to you. It says that he took him by the hand and he went privately and he talked to him. That's interesting because it wasn't that he was referred to some secretary. It wasn't that he was referred to somebody else. The commander himself sat down with Paul's nephew and heard what Paul's nephew had to say. He says this in verse 19, what is it that you have to tell me? Have you ever asked yourself that question? What is it that you have to tell me? Tonight, was, I was getting ready to, uh, to shoot uh, this uh, video. You know, there's a couple of things that I want you to know. I, I, the main question I ask myself every time is, what is it that they need to know? And the thing that a lot of people need to know is they need to be talked through the Scripture. They need to be shared uh, different precepts as they follow along. And, and, and this is something you should know. And there's some interesting words sometimes that you, you want to know, you need to see. And, and so every time we have a conversation or you have a conversation, it's about what do they need to know? What do they need to hear? And so verse 20 says, And he said, The Jews have agreed and ask that you bring Paul down to the council tomorrow, as though they were going to inquire more fully about him. Paul's nephew basically opens up. He says, listen, I want you to know about the Jews. They're, they're conspiring, and they're wanting to, they're going to bring an inquiry to you. They're going to bring an inquiry asking you to do this for them. Verse 21 is where the, uh, where the nutshell, we see the nut, okay? He says in verse 21, but do not yield to them. Do not yield to them. For more than 40 of them lie in wait for him, men who have bound themselves by an oath that they will neither eat nor drink till they have killed Paul. And now they are ready, waiting for the promise from you. Paul's nephew begs him. He basically says, do not yield to them. Do not yield to them. Why? Because there are more than 40 men that are waiting to execute him. There are more than 40 men who are near. These men have, have come and made an oath that they're neither going to eat nor drink. He says, basically, listen, they are ready right now. They are waiting on your promise to do this for them. And if you promise this, it's going to cause an uproar. It's going to cause a distraction. It's going to cause a dissent. Then we see in verse 22. So the commander let the young man depart and commanded him, tell no one that you have revealed these things to me. The commander took advisement to what this man had brought him. He took advisement to what was going on. Yes, the Jewish high priest was about to make an appeal. And yet, now, the commander, a Gentile, a man that was not following God, 
now had Paul's hands or Paul's life in his hands. I want you to think about that for a minute. Have you ever thought about people being in a position of authority that necessarily aren't followers of God? Can God use that situation? Can God use that circumstance? He did here. And I guarantee you he can do it again. It's time for us to step back and yield ourselves to God. Yield ourselves to making sure that we are following through with the great commission and not conspiring to make it the great omission. It's time for us as people of God, as we celebrate this Advent season, as we celebrate this time where we get to worship the glory of the newborn King, it's time for us to herald out His good news and let our friends and our neighbors know that we are followers of Christ and let them know that beyond a shadow of a doubt that God has come to man to make men new. And yes, God will return. Until that day comes, may we be faithful. May we be faithful to challenge even our brethren to know the truth of the gospel, to follow the commandments of God, and to embrace the Word of God. There are too many people that quote-unquote claim the name of Christianity who are neither Christians at all. They have a good talk, but they have no walk. Just like these Jewish men. They claim to be Jews, but to conspire against a brother was to bear false witness. They broke one of the big ten. Thou shalt not kill. You know, that's another one of the big ten. So we come to a point, faith family, where we have to ask ourselves, are we in the role of the Jews? Is there a Paul among us? Or is there a time that we need to step back, redirect our attention, and reach out to others with the glorious hope of Jesus Christ? I don't know about you, but I can find myself at times among the Pharisees. I can find myself at times like Paul. I can find myself at times conspiring. But you know what? It's time to put those things away and embrace the hope and the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's not just play Christian. Let's be Christ-like in our words, in our life, and in all that we do where we bring honor and glory to God. Father, we say thank you for tonight. Thank you for the time that we've had to open your word. Father, I pray that maybe something that is said tonight will take root in people's lives. Father, life is not always going to be easy, but we can be confident in knowing that you're there with us. Oh God, I pray tonight that you would speak to those that are living like Pharisees. That, Father, they would humble themselves and realize that they need your mighty hand. Father, I pray tonight for the one that is, feels like everybody's against them. That, Father, that they would see the love and the hope of mankind through your Son, Jesus. Oh, God, I pray that you would speak to us and that, Father, we would worship your Son in spirit and in truth. For your sake we pray. Amen. There are a couple of announcements tonight that I want to share with you. And as we look at these announcements, um, uh, if you have questions, send them to me. I'd love to talk to you about them. Uh, first and foremost is, uh, as we, uh, let me get over here real quick. Um, we have a couple of key announcements, and the first one is this, is that this Sunday morning 
uh, from 10 a.m. till 10.25, we have a live adult class. Uh, it's not just a, an adult class, it's a family class. And we encourage you to come. We're looking at the seven churches of Asia currently. Uh, it follows along with the study that we've done um, on the live videos. Matter of fact, if you watch the Sunday morning videos, you're gonna be you're gonna be further ahead than you are in the live class. But it's also a great time for discussion, and it's an opportunity for us to meet one with another. So, if you, I would love to see you in our adult Sunday school uh, or our family class this Sunday. I'm sorry, I don't know why I keep saying adult. Um, we also have this Sunday night. Um, um, we're going to have our um, FLBC scavenger hunt. Normally, we like to do something with all the families in the church. And this year, because of COVID, we're having to do things just a little bit differently. So this is the thing. We're going to be meeting with all the people here at 5 p.m. at First Landmark Baptist Church. Uh, we're going to meet in the uh, Welcome Center. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass out uh, the clues for our scavenger hunt. Now, that being said, there are some people that don't feel safe about coming to the facility, and that's okay. Um, we're going to post them also live at 515 um, on the uh, First Landmark, uh, uh, our, our uh, Facebook group. Uh, and if you need those, that, and you're not on Facebook or you're not on YouTube, uh, please send me a message. We want to get that information into your hand at the right time. Now, that being said, is uh, everybody's going to have an hour to complete as many tasks as you possibly can. Uh, and uh, know this, is that we, we're going to have a, a gift card uh, for the winner uh, of the event. Uh, so uh, know that, that that's coming up, uh, that, that we'll announce that not this Tuesday, but next to, uh, sorry, this coming up Tuesday, we'll announce that information uh, via Facebook, as well as uh, send that out uh, through text message to our church family. But we would like for all families of First Landmark to be involved. And if you live in Northwest Arkansas, Bentonville uh, particularly, we would love for you to join us. Uh, you know, you you can you can join alongside us as we uh, look at different aspects of our community and how we can continue to make an impact here. Um, there's a couple of other announcements. Uh, this uh, Christmas Eve. Uh, at 5 p.m., we will have a Christmas Eve service. Uh, we're, we're having to do some things differently uh, than what we uh, originally planned, but that's okay. At 5 o'clock on Christmas Eve, we will have a service here on the campus of First Landmark Baptist Church. Uh, we'd love to make uh, invite you to join us at 1030 on Sunday mornings. Uh, at 1030, we'll be live in the sanctuary. You don't have to make reservations. Uh, you can, you're more than welcome to come. Uh, uh, the pews are uh, roped off every 50 feet. We ask that you sit with your family. We ask that you wear a mask when you come in the building and when you're leaving the building or anytime you're moving in the building. But you, you're more than welcome to remove your mask whenever uh, we're worshiping, singing, uh, opening the Bible together, praying together. You have, the, you have the opportunity to do that. But you say, okay, well, I've been exposed to COVID or I, I have... Um, some issues that I just don't really want to put myself out there right now because of illness or other things. That's okay. You can join us via YouTube or on Facebook Live. Uh, YouTube is the more reliable option. Uh, also, like it and share it with others. Let them know about what's going on in your church family. Uh, this Sunday, we're going to be looking at, of course, uh, the uh, announcement to the shepherds uh, of the birth of Jesus, and I cannot wait to see you uh, on this Sunday. Um, also, we're going to be dropping our uh, Sunday school classes at 9 a.m., our recorded classes, at 9 a.m. on Sunday morning. We would love for you to join us as we look at God's Word together. Uh, Sister Alicia will be doing our kids. Uh, Pastor Stephen will have our teens. And, of course, I will come uh, for our young adults and adults. Uh, join me and join them as we look at what Jesus has done and will continue to do. May God bless you. And have a good night. We'll see you soon.